And the defending armies are sallying out today in this epic battle replay on Total War Rome 2. Hello everyone, welcome back. Ellington here and we are back with, like I said, another epic replay from the Dragon Corps, honestly, because it is a, a replay sent in by one of the Dragon, Tor, Dragon Corps members. Dragon Corps? Dragon Corps? One of the Dragon Corps members, uh, Billy Blazes. Uh, he and a few of the other members were playing uh, games with uh, random players in the lobbies, and they apparently got themselves a good one. So let's go ahead and get into the players for the attackers we have got our verney being commanded by gaius titus anus very roman name very roman name as athens over here we have got spoon cavalry and finally as Ervaki, we have got uh punk i guess he's punk so, for the defenders, as Galatia, we have got Billy Blazes, the person who sent in the game. We have got Pontus being commanded by Silent Fart. And finally, we have Musasely being commanded by Beastmaster. So, this will be a good one. We are on the settlement of Cath. There are a lot of settlements like this in Rome, too, but it usually just varies depending on where the capture point is. So the other common one is Antioch. The capture point of Antioch is up here. Um, but on Antioch, the the area up here is all really wonky and doesn't work very well. So it's hard to really use it. But Kath, the capture point is right over here in a bit of better a bit of a better position to make the game a little bit fairer. On the outside, we have got Numidian Riders coming in. These are the Gorilla Deploy Cavalry for Mesesily. I'm sorry, guys. My, like, talking is just that, 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 that. Um, This one only got 16 kills. I'm a little surprised he went into that. It was kind of a death box there. Uh, same thing over here, 14 kills. I'm not sure exactly what he was trying to accomplish with that. Um, but that's all right. Sometimes you can sneak in and get in some, you know, little cracks in the defenses as you're trying to just basically be a sneaky, annoying person. Now over in, so this is pretty standard attack for Kath is taking this corner, mostly because like on a lot of the settlements we talk about, being able to get angles on the defenders, well, this is a good place to do it because you can get basically back shots on either side of the defense. It honestly pretty much just is a good, easy foothold into the settlement because uh, typically what you see is a pretty big fallback by the defenders. Honestly, they typically just give up this whole area right here. You see Gallic Hunters up here doing exactly that. Nicely played there by Arverni. Um, right now, the defenders aren't really defending in a position where they're getting, where the attackers are getting amazing angles, but they are definitely getting some decent angles. Um, and really, the main thing is, you know, you've got the Eastern Arch as a Pontus. The problem is that the attackers have a lot more room to set up their archers to fight yours. Well, in, on the inside of the settlement, you only have these tight little corridors to set up troops, and that can be really hard to, to take an archer fight because of that. Now, over here, Erevaki had a artillery crew. He, uh, here it is. So he still has the crew. He technically has not lost his artillery. He lost two of them. And then he ran away because of the cavalry, which is fair enough. I'm intrigued to see if he will go get back on it, because he should. Uh, or is he going to try and take over maybe Arvaki's here later, or Ar Arverni's later or something? Gallic Hunters so far, 12 and 16. Got some archers and Cretan archers. Cretans just popped their ability. They are completely unguarded. Uh, he better hope that there's no cavalry that can just 
and get him. Which there isn't, but I'm also a little surprised that the defenders didn't try to chase them off. You can see they're shooting over at the Eastern Slingers from Pontus. Look at this, Pontus brought mercenary, or uh, um, naked swords, mercenary naked swords. It's a really high charge unit. You can see regularly their charge bonus is 32, but when they use their frenzy ability, it makes it a 54. And so they could really make an impact on the charge, but they are a high risk unit. They have 10 armor, AKA you shoot them, they die extremely easily. Um, and they are also a unit you need to be trying to cycle in and out, which he really can't do at the moment. He doesn't have any more real units there to do so. The Galatian, Levy Freeman here, kind of in an awkward angle. He's kind of sitting like this. It's only got two kills as well. I wonder, oh, there's the Javi Toss. And that was a very odd, it's like they threw, but it didn't really seem like it killed anybody. That was weird. It was very odd. Looked like it threw, threw it right in the back of the other Levy Freeman, but it didn't seem to. I guess though you can see that the Levy Freeman did get 34 kills, so. Maybe it did, it just didn't look like he got kills, because it sure as heck didn't look like it. Now Erevaki coming in, Scutari already in the in the mix here. Scutari, a really good unit. You can also see we got some Iberian Swordsmen. Scutari could be, they're one of the best cost-effective units in the game. They're only like 610 gold, I think, 620 maybe. And they can honestly go toe to toe with a lot of the more expensive, like thorax swords and things like that. Very, very good unit. Look at that. They're already 142 kills. No chevrons yet, but you can see they're pretty close to one, so they've got no K kills. Celtic warriors. All right. So, to be honest with you, you can see this corner is pretty much done. I don't think that they will really be sending anything else into this. You can see there's a cup or a Levy Freeman and a Numidian Light Infantry defending it at the moment. But to be honest with you, after that, I bet you they're just going to let this go. Typically, what you see then is a defense here, and then honestly, you typically see something back here. I guess I should use the right lines for this something like that, and that, and then like that. Artillery is firing. The Celtic Ballista, uh, 24 kills. And still nothing getting on to the Ballista over here. We still have the Cappadocian Cav over here. I don't know if I showed that earlier. Pontus has a Cappadocian Cavalry that came out of the gate. I'm not even sure that the enemy saw them. I would assume they did. But he does have them tucked away here like he's hiding them. So it makes me curious as to if they didn't see it, them or if he's basically just trying to hope they forget it. Tribal Slingers got their butts kicked by some archers. Got more of the Pontic archers back here. Yeah, so majority of the forces are in the back here. You can see Galatia keeping some of his units in reserve off to the right, actually. Which is okay, it, it basically just keeps them from being clogged into this area. As you can see, it's already clogged. So having three more units of Galatian Legionaries in that spot would probably not be advisable. 51 kills on the Celtic Giant Ballista. Now, something I want to ask you guys, and I want you to leave this in the comments section. If you were living in this time period... What is your weapon of choice? Are you, uh, are you gonna have a sling? Are you gonna have a bow, a spear, a sword? What kind of sword? You know, I wanted, or an ax, you know. Let me know what would you guys use if you were a warrior in these ancient times, the Roman times. Um, I I'm intrigued to see what everybody says. For me, I think I would go with Sarissa. I think I, I would want to be a pikeman. A pikeman in the armies of Alexander the Great himself. 
Desert Legionary is now in combat. Look at that, 68 kills. Not very many, not very much XP though. You can see by that little green bar next to the XP. Uh, so it means that he's probably not killing the greatest stuff. Looks like some Celtic warriors so far. They are getting hit pretty hard by that artillery. It is now up to 68 kills. And then this is why we typically see people not hold this area is because now they're going to drop this. They're going to drop this. And that's honestly basically going to make this area just not a very feasible place to actually defend. Oh, man, that Desert Legionary got so lucky. Those three were just perfectly waiting to go right into his formation. And his formation kind of bugged a little bit. It kind of went a little wonky. And so he didn't get hit by it. Lucky. Ah! We're getting shot by fiery balls of justice, sir. What would you have us do? Dodge, dip, dive, duck, dodge. Did I actually say that correctly? Somebody Google it and let me know. Did I actually say that correctly from the movie Dodgeball? I don't think I've ever been able to say that correctly. I always screw it up somewhere, but I think I, I think I might be right. Let me know in the comments section. Did Ellington correctly quote a movie? It might be a first time. You know, you know how it goes on this channel, guys. We we both know you're just here for the bad jokes and movie quotes. I'm totally going to make a shirt for that. Which, by the way, if you didn't know, I do have merchandise. It is linked down in the description. Got shirts, cell phone covers, uh, mugs, blankets, sweatshirts, all sorts of stuff, actually. And they're pretty cool. And I, like I said, I, I want to make a designed... Uh, I'm just here for the, the bad jokes and movie quotes. Eastern Slingers, what are they duking it out with? Is that a... Oh, it's a Balearic and Gallic... No, it's Gallic Hunters, just the Gallic Hunters. The Balearic, you can see running away back there. Really just not enough room for Balearics and Gallics and all this stuff. Oh, and look at this cheeky, cheeky. Out here, Pontus with his Eastern Slingers came out here and is actually just being a little bit of a nuisance. So the thing is, he is going to lose that to the uh, the two Balearic Slingers. Then you have a very small Mercenary Celtic Warrior that's out here. I'm not sure if he's going to try and go be sneaky or if he's going to try to do that. If he does this, he's definitely going to die. If he does this, he might. I doubt he'll get anything, but... I'm a little surprised that he sent the Eastern Slinger all by his lonesome. You know, with the two Balearics there, the Balearics were definitely going to win that fight. Balearics a very, very good Slinger unit. Chosen Swords versus Galatian Legionaries. Galatian Legionaries should get the better of this, uh, and it also looks like the Chosens are already dinged up as well. So that is going to have some effect on this like how right as I get want to get a screenshot they run away but here comes some throw spears get a charge throw spears said well never mind I don't want to be involved in that that's a Thorax hoplite actually oh it's just oh, look at that chariots coming in holy shit I didn't expect that I mean, I knew they were chariots, but damn. Ow. Stop blowing holes in my ship. Oh. Well. These chariots are having some uh, issues here. Somebody get some good screenshots of the chariots going through. I don't... Is there any left that I can try and get a... See how many kills they got? I don't think it was very many. Look at the Celtic Warriors got all the way in here! How the hell did you let that happen? Blarix 111 uh, and... What? Kill, kill, yeah, 110. Kill. Where'd the other... Maybe it just got away with no damage. Yeah, it might have just gotten away with no damage. All right, so Galatian Legionary is now engaging on the threat. Well, 
So the Glacial Legionaries, I'm pretty sure, were microed onto the Chosen Sword, and so they tried to go keep going with it. But the Thorax Hoplite was kind of in the way and didn't really allow it to happen. Sorry about that, I had to get a drink. Syrian Archers. So this one's actually been shooting, got 16 kills. How the Galax, they've been shooting quite a bit. 57, 31, 47. Got an Eastern Archer up here, but the Eastern Archer about to get triple teamed. Well, maybe just double teamed by the two Gallic Hunters. Interestingly, the, we still have a Desert Legionary engaged on this area, which I'm a bit surprised by. It is keeping the tower neutralized, which allows them to continue defending here. Heavy Numidian Skirmishers, 117 kills, and in combat, so they must be out of ammo already. And then, ah, oh, Tribal Stingers got really beat up by some Cretan Archers. 33 kills, Archers 43 kills. Very nice, very nice. Now back over on the other side here, we've got the Thorax Sword. We've got the Thorax Hoplite, 82 kills. Chosen Sword, 43 kills, but with a Chevron. I'm curious as to if that came from the Armored Chariots, possibly. Glacian Legionaries, one Chevron with 160. Getting some decent quality kills there. And now we're getting a switch out. See, so looks like just a couple of Galatian Legionaries switching out. And then up on the walls, we have another Galatian Legion. Oh, this is going to hurt. Gallic Hunters saw that, and they just saw blood. That might have been a bit of a boo-boo move. Pontus did bring two pikes. That's actually, I think, honestly not a bad idea. There's really nobody on the other side that can that can counter that too well. Uh, Athens is the only one that can bring pikes, and I don't believe they did. Artillery did get onto the ballistas, by the way, and you can see the troops climbing the towers to begin moving them out of the way so that the ballista can begin firing. Now, since Athens did not bring pikes, at least that, not that I've seen, that means that their really only good counter to these ones is going to be their archers. So, the question to be is, do they save enough ammo to deal with them? Regular pikemen themselves are not too significantly scary. They are definitely something you can deal with. 65 armors, it's just okay. So, archers can do a pretty good... Can do pretty good with these. You can see they're already beat up. I think they might have gotten kind of banged up by some artillery fire, possibly. Artillery from Arverni, by the way, 160 kills. Oh, look at this. Arverni with the Osworn up on the wall. Not just in Osworn, the Osworn General up on the wall, taking on that Galatian Legionary. Uh, the Osworn, 26 kills. He lost, um, what, 24 men. But honestly, that's because of a combination of fighting the Galatian Legionaries, but he's also getting shot pretty heavily. I think that was a bit of a risky move. Uh, you know, putting the Osworn up is, I don't think, that bad, but putting the General up is where I see a little bit of a risky move here. Sorry about that, hit my mic. But at the same time, the attackers are also doing the exact same thing to the defenders here, that Galatian Legionary just getting ripped to shreds by archer fire and slinger fire and pretty much anything that could be thrown from a sling or shot from a bow was being thrown at that Galatia Legionary. Iberian swords in combat, guitar, or no, two Iberian swords. Let's see, 31 men, 70 men. Honestly, I'm a little surprised they're still in this. Iberian swords at 31 men and they're still fighting. Or, yeah, 30. Maybe we can get a good one here. Yeah, there we go. There we go. 
Got some Thorax Hoplites in the mix. Thorax Sword. Look at this. Man, they are pushing all the way over. Look at this extension by Athens. He wants to expose the backside of this defense. He basically, he wants to compromise this by forcing Masasely to have to defend behind it, which is not fun. Means that Masasely isn't gonna be able to fully focus into that, that one corridor anymore. He's gonna have to be worried about what's happening behind him now as well. Now on the right side, things have they've cooled down a little bit. We still have some combat between the thor Thorax and the Galatian Legionaries. 179 kills and 60 kills. Thorax Sword is pretty well outmatched in this matchup with the Galatian Legionary. Kill him! Death to the Shire! If nobody knows that reference, I, oh man. There, there was a game back in the day called Lord of the Rings Conquest that was basically just a uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2, the original knockoff. It was basically Star Wars Battlefront 2 with Lord of the Rings stuff. But there was a thing that you could do where you could do a mode that took you down a storyline where Frodo keeps the ring instead of destroying it. And he ends up trying to go conquer the Shire. And it's just hilarious because you get to hear Frodo Baggins scream, Death to the Shire! Oh, it's fantastic. A good game. Cappadocian Cav now in play. He's going after the artillery, but the artillery has already been pulled off. And they already have stuff, including Scutari Spearmen up here. Uh, Skitari Spears have 20 bonus versus large. I don't think this Cappadocia Cav is really going to get anything out of this. We also have some Thorough Spears coming in. The Ballista's lost three men, but I'm not even sure that's to the cavalry. We actually have a bit of a sally out, though. Look at this. Masasli, Pontus, all coming out and hitting the flank of this uh, Athenian force here. Interesting counterattack. So we got Pontic Swords going up against some Thorax Swords. I love that kind of like seafoam green. I'm not even seafoam, I don't even know what you would call that green. Uh, but then with Athens, you have that really light sky blue. Pontic Swords, you can see pulled off. The Pontic Sword is honestly basically just the the cheaper, worse version of a Thorax Sword. And I'm assuming that they held off on this side because of what's going on on the other side. They don't want to be microing two different positions. It honestly seems like they are putting a lot of more effort into this flank than they were into the other one. The Cappadocian Cavalry survived. And they actually are healthy, survived. 69 men. <laughs> Giggity. Where did the artillery run off to? Where did you go? Where did it go? Oh, he's hiding over here. Well surrounded by his men. And he still can't fire this damn ballista. Ooh, now they're getting shot. You know, because of this going on here, they actually were getting shot by the heavy minion skirmisher general was throwing javelins down into their backs. Nice move. But then a good counter by Athens to then try and shoot them off the wall. And uh, it looks like yeah, I did a pretty solid job. Look at that. One uh, 120's got 67 men left. Gallic Hunter's also focusing that as well. So a costly decision. Um, in the end, it looks like it may not have been the best decision at all to try and do that. He may have gotten some kills, uh, but man, he took a beating. And amazingly, it does not look like his general's dead either. 
I do kind of wish that you could see which one is the general. Kind of sucks that you can't, but whatever. Usually it'll tell you, you know, general dead or something of the sort, but it does not. Misesli is not a faction you really want to be losing your general. Uh, their morale just is not the greatest, and so general dying can be pretty rough on them. Cappadocian Cav coming all the way around. What's he thinking? Is he thinking he's going to try and get something in here? There's a Gallic Hunter sitting right there. Oh, come on, Cappadocians. Oh, come on, Cappadocians. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Did they move in time? I don't know. That one. That one's totally caught. Oh, yeah. Oh, Arverni, I don't know what you're doing, man. That was some sort of decision. Big oof. Big, big oof. Oh, man. And, I mean, obviously he survived, but unnecessary. Unnecessary losses. Because he's lost men, he loses ammunition. Yeah. Like, the Cappadocians didn't get that many kills, but way more than he should have. And what I mean by that is he should not have gotten any kills because he those archers should not have been there. If you didn't catch my drift. And they're still fighting this fight, man. And, may, and once again, I'm amazed they continue to fight within the range of this tower just free shots for the attackers free 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 then looks like some eastern archers moving forward from pontus maybe gonna go try and you know maybe push off these gallic sorry about that had to get a drink you can see pontus pulling troops back into the settlement honestly i think mostly just due to the fact that you know this fight here was over they're really these two units were not going to sway the swing the tide of that battle so i think it is a good decision to pull these units back and keep them you know no point in throwing them into a hopeless fight heavy new minions skirmish was 162 kills nicely done now the Eastern Archer is being pushed away due to the combination of the Gallic Hunters and the Cretan Archers. It's a rough day for Easterns. Easterns, they've got 150 range, but they only have 35 melee da or uh, weapon damage. What am I talking about? Missile damage, excuse me. And they only have 10 armor, you know what I mean? Just, uh, meh. If you look in comparison, Cretan Archers here, 40 uh, missile damage, excuse me. And 30 armor, so in a fight between Eastern Archers and Cretans, you know, that 20 extra armor is pretty influential. Over here, still nothing. Nothing happening on this side. Slingers, we're going to move forward and just pelt the front of the Chosen Swords. Bubbles would be proud. Wouldn't you, Mr. Bubbles? Well, now they stopped. Hate when that happens. You're like, oh, look what, this, look what they're going to do now. And then they don't do it. And you're like, well, fuck me too then, I guess. 117, 118, and a Chevron. So they've gotten pretty good kills there. They have been fighting Desert Cohort, which is one of those... Desert Cohort are, they're, they're a tough, oh, sorry, hit the, hit, fast forward button. Um, they're kind of a weird unit, right? Because they're too good and too expensive to be like a mid-tier, but they don't get any sort of ability like headhunt or use the whip or anything of the sort. And they're not quite expensive enough to be like high tier. So there's, there's odd, you know, oddly weird 
middle of the road between high and mid tier unit. Uh, they are really good, but they, you know, so they beat a mid tier, but they still lose to a high tier. Just a, just a very odd unit. Good unit, good unit, don't get me wrong, but an odd unit. Now the archers and slingers getting in here. Gallic hunters getting peppered by some Syrian archers. Syrians! Oh, that was like perfect timing. Oh, did you hear that? Oh, that was cool. Syrians, loose! Uh-oh, Cretans now double team in Syrian. Oh, Glacia. Oh, the horror. Yeah, that was, that was a ouchy. There's another, you know, we were talking about archers. Now, Syrians, they only have the 35 damage, but then they get the 40 uh, armor. So, you know, you lose some here, you gain some there. That's what makes the um, Chimerian Heavy Archers, I honestly, personally just think the best archer in the game is that they get the 40 missile damage, but then they also get a 35 armor, which is between the 40 of the Syrian and the 30 of the Cretan. So a little bit better armor than the Cretan, a little bit, you know, and then they get the damage of the Cretan. So just a good unit. Are they gonna fully give up this choke point and just let them walk in? Maybe they're gonna set up a kill box. Hoplite, uh, Pontic Sword, maybe. You can see they're now landing on the walls. The Masasi General is still on the wall. I this general's got to be dead. I wonder, and I, I could be wrong on this. It could be that because the Masasi, many of the Masasi units are uh, uh, disciplined, it could be maybe it doesn't show the general's dead message. Let's see, where's one of their... Do they have any of their cheap, crappy units left? It doesn't look like it. Well, shit, never mind. Coming through the breach as well. You got Thorax Hoplites. Look at this, one of the archers coming in. I think they should give this up. Galatia is rushing forward. Easterner archers running away. And then the Athenian archer is hitting the backs of the Pontic sword that is uh, holding this breach. Galic hunters seem to have been out of ammo because they went into combat there. Desert cohort down to 18 men. 138 kills is, I mean, he got a chevron. It's, it's solid. It's okay. Definitely, you know, would love to see a little bit better out of a desert cohort, you know, given that that's a, you know, pretty solid unit. And then this is a pretty beat up Galatian Legionary as well. Valeric's actually moving up. Moving up, moving up. Are they getting ready to shoot something or are they just coming in to chill? Skitari 88 kills. They're actually about to get a Chevron as well. I think this is the expected fallback. See some chosen swords up on the wall. I'm pretty sure those are the ones that landed. The Masasi General is dead and gone for sure. Oh my gosh. The Galatian Legionnaire over here just getting pelted to death. Yep, that one is gone. 
You go. But they got plenty of reinforcements here to hold this gap. Over here, uh, they actually, you know, still kind of defending a little more forward than I expected. Syrians are shooting the Balearics, which really, the Balearics can't do anything about it. They are sitting ducks sitting in that little corridor, and the Syrians can just shoot them at will with no repercussions in any way, shape, or form. Nam, man, up, and am. The push over here seems to be losing a little bit of steam. Well, I mean, maybe not, because now there's nothing to go plug this gap anymore. So I guess it is. Yeah, it's a, they're, they're in. Never mind. I was seeing this over here, and it looked like this. The it was stalling quite a bit, you know. But you could see that this is now just an open door. Cretan archers from Athens, 182 kills. Pretty damn good. Celtic slingers, run away! What are you doing? Looks like they didn't realize. So I think we could safely, safely just say that this area is, the, is now lost and that they're probably going to be... If I was them, I would be just kind of consolidate my forces, solid... Wow, solidify my line. They need to be careful. You know, I was thinking they might be able to do a pike here. Well, they, they might be able to now because I think the Blairics are moving away. That's it. I think if they're going to move this way, I think that's exactly what I would do. Pike this off. Tell these Chosen Swords to shove off. Go on, get. Pontic General is in combat. If Pontus loses his general, that's a big oof for him. 50 base morale on the Pontic Swordsman. So the general dies for Pontus. It is gone. You can see the Pontic Swords just kind of losing all across the board. I hate to say it, I, I don't expect that we're going to see super high kill rate for the Pontus player just because he's pretty much outclassed in every way, shape, and form here. Their archers are better, their infantry is better, they have elites, he does not. You know, Pontus is pretty much just outmatched here. Facial Legionaries have lost one man and they have 62 kills. Yeah, look at this. Blairics have fully gone off to the side. Put a pike in play, Pontus. Put a pike in play and forget about it. Then you can fully concentrate over here. You can put another pike over here, maybe. Gallic Hunter's moving up. So that just throws a wrench in all those plans. These Eastern Archers are something over there. Slingers would do fine. Oh no! Thorax Hoplite getting through the line. Oops, sorry about that. Got a Syrian Archer, 123 kills that went in to stop it. Then you can see coming up behind it, Galatian Leech Area with 158 men. So they just need to finish off this one Thorax, or Thoro Spear, excuse me. And then this, you know, that area should be fine. Ooh, but man, look at this. Qatari coming around. Bounce power is heavily in the attacker's favor at this point. This is not looking good for the defenders. Both pikes are in play over here. And the Gallic Hunters are just going to nuke them. There's nothing worse than this situation when there's just nothing you can do about it. You're you're pretty much just SOL. I mean, you know, your archers are gone. Your you know, any counter you have to those range units is gone, and all you have left is your key component, which is your pikes. 
that don't like archers. So it's a that's a tough one there. 109 men, 157 men. Now up to 90, or down to 90, I guess I should say. 83. Gallic Hunters right around 100 kills each. The Glacial Legionaries over here are kind of in an odd spot. They're facing over here, but they're getting attacked behind by Scutari. 181 kills on Scutari. It's pretty good. Still got the noble horse running around. He's got 37 kills, and he's hurt. What the hell were you fighting? Yeah, what did the noble horse fight? Did they try to sneak in and the noble horse stopped him? I don't see anything. Very interesting. 197 on the Galatian Legionaries. I'm calling it. I, I think that uh, I think Miss, or I think that Galatia gets the most kills for the defenders. I think our Verney is going to get top kills overall. Double horse charging the back of his guitar unit. Hammer and anvil, boys. Hammer and anvil. But I do think that it is a safe bet to call this. An attacker victory. 35 seconds left, and it's pretty much just the pikes and a couple oddball units here and there. I'm honestly amazed that it has not started doing army losses yet. And right as I say it, there's the army losses tag. Big oof. Go ahead and fast forward to the end here. All right, let's look at some kills. First off, we have got Billy Blazes as Galatia, and as I called it, most kills on his team, 1,934 kills. All of his infantry doing pretty solid. This one only 91, though. Syrian Arch with only 25. Not bad overall, though. Silent Fart as Pontus, 1450. I told you, I did not think we were going to get a very good kill rate here from Carth or from Pontus, excuse me, literally just due to the fact that his units were completely outclassed at pretty much top to bottom. Beastmaster as Masesi with 1,701 kills. Uh, the chariot ended up getting 178. It's not bad. Um, you know, those chariots are just kind of a, you know, it's an all or nothing thing, man. Infantry, like I said earlier, I think I would I would want to see a little better out of the infantry kills, but he was taking on some tough stuff. Spoon Cavalry as Athens, 1868, with, uh, yeah, I mean, Athens here. Or I think I skipped Arverni, excuse me. Gaius Titus Anus is Arverni, 2122. Celtic Warriors 235 is really solid. And all of his infantry, for the most part, did pretty solid. 73 kills, but still really healthy. Um, Spoon Cavalry, Athens, 1868. Archers did really good. Thorax Swords just kind of did okay. They were they were there. Then finally, Punk as Aravaki, 2140. Um, coming in second. I think I said, I, I, I believe I said Arverni would get the most, but... Uh, uh, Aravaki actually pulling this one out by 18 kills. Slingers did really solid, and then the Skutari just doing work. Noble Fighter really didn't even see any fighting. Well, that is going to be it for today's battle. Thank you guys so much for joining. Don't forget that if you are new to the channel, hit that su subscribe button. And we will see you guys next time.